My name is Vern Greenwood. Yes. I live in Newtonville, a big town of about maybe 1,500 people <laughs> or more. And uh, I'm supposed to be retired, but I still work in the summertime on the farm as a mechanic, do all the repair. I'm perfectly healthy, and I want to keep it that way. And uh, so I work for exercise to keep myself because the Lord has given me that health and I want to keep it. So, but I'm, I've got a, a place in Florida, so I go to Florida every winter when I can, sometimes for two months. Now my wife is now deceased. It's to make it tough. But last winter, my younger son, which is now a U.S. citizen, decided he was going to come and stay with me. And I said, I, I was delighted. He says, set him. He said, I'm going to set myself in the room there because I teach virtual. So he set himself there. And we were there only a little while when this disease broke through. Trump, President Trump, was on the, every day on the news saying that they had a new disease that is called COVID-19. And I said to myself, what's going on? But I'm a news nut. I always like to listen to the news. I said, go to all the channels to get as much as I can. I've been like this since, since the 50s. So three weeks almost to the day when this news come in, there's a picture of the whole United States, Canada, and part of Mexico with all dots everywhere in every state, every city, every hamlet, according to the population. And you see the red dots means the size of the population in the state and in everywhere. So I look at this. And I'm not very bright, I have to confess that. I have to take time to analyze what I hear. And he said, all the deaths that's already in there, there are so many, where do you see the red dot, as all the people have been affected. I thought to myself, I travel a lot. How can this news spread so fast? How can a disease be in Seattle when they just come in New York three weeks ago? Well, they had an answer. It says, this travels so fast that we are dumbfounded how it did, but it's everywhere. And I said to myself, I don't buy that. I just can't believe the mighty army of U.S. and Canada together could not have done that themselves. This is not possible to cover all these little towns and everything in three weeks. So I said to Ken, I said, what do you think? He said, Ken, he says, I think you're right, Dad. Says, There's no way. He said, I'm a computer man, and I could not contact people that fast. Even for everybody that has a computer, we couldn't do it. So he said, what do you think? Well, why are you saying that? I says, because it doesn't add up. In my own computer, in my head, it doesn't compute. So I said, I'm going to go to the Lord. So I said, Lord, what is going on? There's something beyond my understanding. As you know, I'm not very bright, so you're going to have to be really to the point with me. So I didn't get no answer, but I kept proceeding, proceeding every day. I said, Lord, there's something I don't understand, but I need to know because something is out of control. And it began to shut the place, the world down. I said, look, this has never happened before. This is new. And I said, I'm really concerned for everybody. Not for me, I said, I'm 92 years old. 
I, I'm just about ready to get out of here. So I said, let me know, Lord, what's happening. I need to know. And I persist every day. And then the Lord, he says, I have today come to answer you because you persisted. He says, you remember in the Bible when the widow was going to this judge? He said, the whole story is in your mind. I don't have to tell you more. So he says, you persist and you persist. Now he says, I will come down to answer you. How he traveled that fast, he said, it's very simple. It's been there for 15 years. My mouth just dropped over. It's been there for 15 years. Well, he said, round about the way it's been traveling. So he said, I said, so how, how, how did it work out? Well, he said, ever since they've been taking shots for the flu shot, for the flu, the disease is in that shot. Wow. I said to Ken, I, right away, I said, did you, would you believe this? Ken says, well, he says, this is really an answer to how we travel fast. It was already there. They've been injecting people for the flu shot. For years. So, but now he says, I have showed you at this time, I have to take you back. Because of your age, I got to go back years and years. He says, are you ready? I said, Lord, I'm all ears. I cannot get enough of it. So he says, you remember when you were a little kid, about six, seven years old? You were in school, and they always ask you for five cents a month to send to China because of a very poor country and to try to convert them to Christianity. So we were Roman Catholic, going to church. So we would try to get five cents to give to send to China. So because it was a very poor country. So later on, what happened? China began to see how much people were multiplying. They were all in little patch living on rice because of the cheapest thing to live on, very easy to grow with very little money because nobody had any money. It was passed on the seed by one family to another. And then they began to realize that the whole country was full of people that had nothing to do but multiply. <laughs> and he said, we had much more people than we know of. So what we're going to do, we're going to invite the world, the developing world, to bring their business to us so we can employ these people. Because we are... We have no money. We need money to run the government. Well, he said, as soon as the rest of the world knew about it, they flocked to China to reap and rape China of the labor force. Because men are, are men. And he said, you know, you're, like your mind, you've employed people from your little company. You know that it went on strike against you. He says, you know. But he says, you were different, but still you, you were firm. You said, if you can't take the wages I'm paying you, you're all fired. <laughs> he said, you didn't go for their ploy. But he says, most company don't want to share their pie. They don't want to give you a piece of pie. They want you to go for nothing. In this here, we have union. So we demand a share of the pie. But the union went out of control and want to run the companies. So he said, now most of the company want a place of escape, so come to China. They were invited. So we have people that I know, Peter is in there, I said, now I understand. Peter went up there and they started a company, which I think is still there. 
He says, the reason why I pick you is for the knowledge that you have and for your years, because it spanned a long time. So he said, what happened is they brought so many thousands of people in there to develop this company. They brought all the knowledge from across the world to build up whatever the tooling and everything, uh, clothing. He said, people began to be delighted to have work. Everybody come in to get a job. He said, there was no work. We couldn't provide anything for, for the people. But all of a sudden, the demand was so great that people would come off this rice field to work with us. So he said, that was fine. The government was making money. So we brought more. But he said, these people, there was, we saw some of the region with 50 million people. Within a few years, there was 350 million. He said there was an explosion. They didn't realize how much the population could multiply. Besides, these people that live on a, on a small rice patch were been poisoned by the what's in rice. Arsenic is in white rice. The cheapest food was very fulfilling. It satisfied their hunger, and it gave them full food without they have to put any money because they didn't have any. But the penalty is that you only live 28 years on the average. So he said, but when he came into the city, got a job, they won't live on light rice anymore. So these people didn't live 28 years. So they multiply even faster. So we decide we're going to limit the ability to, for, to birth control. One child per family. Well, he said, it was fine. We control that. But people are people. They don't want to kill their own kids. Contraceptive was too much money for them. They were living at practically starving wages, but they had a job. That, so we put them all on peace work. They could work around the clock. So he said, the people, being people, we are all greedy, but through hunger, you do a lot more. They would send medicine to their grandfathers back on the rice, rice pack and helping them so they work harder. And then he says these people begin to run, get run down because he says we had to hire people to keep them awake on a job because they would work themselves. He says, why? I pick you is another reason. You remember you work yourself up to death? You remember you died at 37? I said, yeah. Well, he said, they did the same as you. You didn't do it for greed. You had a reason. You want to give your family what you never had. You came from a broken home, very poor. And you said, when I get married, I'm not going to break up at any cost. I'm going to give my kids a nice home, a place to live with a room of their own. This is my goal. So you work yourself to death to do it. But he says, several times I tried to make a millionaire out of you. But you wouldn't listen. And he did. Now I know, because he revealed it to me how he did. He says, you remember where you were on Texas Road? That's where you began. He said, there was three patches of land, 10 acres each. You went down to the one that owned them, and you said, what? The, I had an acre out of a 10-acre parcel. I said, I want to buy the rest of my 10-acre parcel. He says, I'm an older man. He says, I have cancer. I'm not going very long. They gave me a year to live. I don't want my wife to have any problem. He says, you come to the right place, he says. He says, I have three other 10-acre parcels. 
including my home here. And he said, I sell them all to you for 10,000 a, a parcel, which was a gift. And he says, I will make it that you can't lose it. Any time that you can't make the payment, put it off on the end. So long as you don't take advantage of it. But he says, since you came to me, he says, you seem like a, a reasonable man. I'm going to trust you because of the situation I have want to sell. So I said, Lord, I said uh, to that man, I said, well, I'm going to consider that. I went home, forgot all about it. So that's just the process of making me a millionaire. Later on, when I was in steam trucking business, hauling scrap iron, I need to buy another truck because the company wanted to put another truck on. So I searched for a truck, and knowing inside of a truck, I couldn't find a truck in a new truck that had all the component that I want. So I went to all the truck dealer. I looked and sized up the truck. There was a lot of wrong. They weren't built right. So I went to the head man and I said, I want to buy a truck, but you don't have the truck I need. Well, what's wrong with that? I said, for one thing, you don't have a truck with a tr in here with a straight, straight frame. They're all bent. Insulted as they were, and said, well, show us. Went all the back. All the truck is just bare frame at the back. I said, look at the frame, line it up. Look at the frame. It just, every one of them were at least four or five inches off. Each company. So I went, I was Kenworth, at the time the best truck. I went to Ford, same thing. I went to Freightliner, same thing. So I went down to GM. They had big place here near Highway 5. So I said, um, I want a truck with what I want. By that time, they have come up with the, big, the new big Cummings 400. So I told him what I want. Well, he said, we have three million, two to three million dollars worth of trucks sitting here. I'm sure we have the truck for you. So I went out there. I had to go to the truck. Still, they had not one truck that was straight frame. That was the beginning. I look at all the components. The, the, the drivetrain, the size of the, the, the powerhouse on the motor, the right transmission, the right rear end with the right ratio, all the stuff that I want because of my knowledge of the trucking since I started with a third, 1932 Ford truck. I was 12 years old. I've been in the trucking since. So I developed a knowledge of the truck and what is currently the right ratio, so at the right gear, what you want your RPM at. So I told him, I said, after searching all of your truck here, you don't have a truck for me. Well, the guy that was running the GM plant, they said, you tell me I don't have a truck? So I said, come with me. So I went with him, we went around the whole trucking situation. I show him the truck or the line, and I show him not one of them had the right drive shaft, had the right rear end, had the right suspension, had the right transmission to comply for my need. And I said, many of them are running under the same system. He says, no, he said, look at them. He says, there's 100 people in there looking for trucks. They go around and they're gone. I said, that's the reason, because they understand of today's truck. You, you're building yesterday's truck. Have a little patience with me. Days go long, because the lot. So the guy called me in. He said, listen, I'm going to offer you a job to spec all our truck because of your knowledge. And he says, I'm going to start you off with six figure. And he says, I'm going to give you two weeks off, paid, to get your little company straightened out. 
So I look at that and I said, well, I got to, I got, I got to run my company. See, it didn't click on. That was far more than I was making. <laughs> See, not very bright. So, but there was a reason. So I went home, never even told Marion. So I kept on trucking, working, and then till I uh, come to a place where I am where today. I retired at 66, and then I started well, going to Florida every year. And now go back to the, the reason why this going on. I listened to the, the news again, and I said to Ken, I doesn't complete. And the Lord told me why. And he said, now we have all these people. What are we going to do with these people? So the invent of, of a virus out of the coal, multiply that virus so that thinking that we, these people were getting cold because they were overwork. They work around the clock. We had to hire people to keep them awake so they wouldn't get caught in the machinery and get hurt. So they said, because of the hunger, they work themselves just like you did. That's why I picked you. Do you understand? So I said, all right. So he said, we, in, our mission was to control our population. Not the world. Our control, that was our mission, to control the people because they're multiplying the Chinese. faster. Yeah, that's in China. Our mission, because it was out of hand, out of control. So he said, we have to develop something that they, would, they won't even know, but that instead of healing them, because it was, it's working, we, people are dropping off like flies by buying what, uh, what we have done. They had invented this thing, multiplying the virus that's in pneumonia to three to four times. So it was not designed to help them, but to control the population. And because they're all getting sick because of overwork, which now is out of control, well, one person would drop off, there was a hundred more to take their job and doing the same thing. So he said, we took advantage of that to use that for population control. And it was working so well, we let it go. But he said, after a little while, it increased the death. And we were afraid somebody would catch on because a lot of people came into our country to work even biology with drugs. And sooner or later, they're going to catch on that we are not helping them, but we're killing them. So we have to design a decoy. And he said, with the new technology, it was very easy. Everybody has a cell phone now. And he said, nobody could go anywhere without their cell phone. So he says, we're going to tell them that we've up the power in the, to G5 instead of G4, which is not um, able to be handled by human. It will kill you in the end. And he knew it. And if we're going to install all these boxes on the phone, you know, the, for, for a, a cell phone, you have to have a, a tower. We will put boxes on it, thinking for them that we're doing this, but we're not going to tell them. We're going to let the thing leak out so that once they, they get to know well, word of mouth travels almost as fast, as, especially with the cell phone now. In no time at all, 
people realize that this problem was there was a, a gene that was killing people. And he says, we're going to call it COVID-19. So we take the attention from the killer disease to a new gene that was caused by the telephone. And they said it worked. People were dying, which was we wanted to know, but we didn't want to let them know we were killing them because nobody wants to be killed. So he said, you see now how quick it, but now it, all the people that had little business there so well, we need these flu shots at home because we have pneumonia everywhere every year. Why it was picked in the wintertime? Because people understood the cold flu is everywhere. And they began to supply them with flu shots out of China. And it worked, according to them. Because now people were sick a lot more because they were embedded with flu shots, which people who got pneumonia now was very potent. I remember uh, President Trump had this person, this woman that was on the news all the time speaking about this person. And she said, be careful, stay home, because this virus is deadly. It has the same symptoms as a cold. It lasts the same amount of time and is cured by the same medicine. But it's much more potent. If you have a cold, do something about it because it will kill you in the end. So I look at that and I said, man, this is really possible. But I said, I listened to her. If it sounds like a duck and it walks like a duck and it looks like a duck, it's a duck. And they're trying to tell us it's an elephant. Now this disease was far greater than the coal. So I said, that's really what's happening. Now, if it's, this is not known, now the whole world is convicted and convinced the flu shots are there to help them. And the Lord says, remember, I never told anybody else but you. Now he says, you're not an educated man. No one will believe you, but I'm sending you to the right people that will make contact to who you want to control it. He says, it's in your hand. But I said, Lord, I, I'm nothing. I'm nobody. Who will listen to me? He says, the power will be given to listen. He said, now he said, if you want to go all the way, go to a priest. This man at the head of our country is under the control of the Roman Catholic by priests. He will make contact. But I said, who am I to have a meeting with the Prime Minister? He says, it's not going to be up to you. Just trust me. And he left it at that. Trust me. He says, you've been trusting me with all your life, with your health, with everything. And he says, you're an example. I've appeared to you back when you're 37 to make you a minister. And, and an example of what I can do if you trust in me fully. Okay. I have kept you in perfect health. So he says, a minister, and he says, are you ready for that? I said, yes. A witness. 
and I will send you wherever you comply with me to go. And you'll have an ear for the one that I call you. So here I am. This is the whole content. So I'm trying to understand your uh, experience. Um, your experience, you gave your testimony in relationship to... I can hardly hear you. Can you come a little closer? Closer. Because you know, okay. this I'll, same when I got, down. I got hurt by the battery that blew oh, yeah, up on me. Okay. I, I think you heard that it was. You were saying it was because of the flu shots everyone's been given over the years. That's what's caught. Uh, I never got flu shot. No, you never did. But that's what God told you that it was the flu shot. Yeah, like at first He said, "Why it travels so fast? Wow. It's because it's in the flu shot. In the flu shot. They have right. multiplied the disease yeah. that to kill." The whole world, like in, in, uh, well, well, in, China, in China, to control the mo- yeah. control the population. So the yeah. people that are working in China, sending hmm. all the tools that they're making here, decide that Canadians, U.S., all over the world that had companies in there, yeah. Yeah. we can buy this flu shot and sell it to our country because they need it, Actually, not knowing that, what's that, in it. That's hmm. Very interesting because um, mm. when this thing broke, uh, yeah. the the, um, the pharmaceutical companies uh, had to confess oh. that what they had done, all their stuff was made in China. Oh, that's right. That's right. <laughs> you know why it was made in China? That, that was a deliberate policy yeah. of the Perhaps. Chinese government. What they did, this yeah. is how they did it. Now, having done work in China, yeah. I understand the mentality. Because I know we sent all, their man- all our manufacturing over there. Yep. But why the drugs? But everything. <laughs> for money. It has to be all right. money. You see, how they do this, yeah. they, they don't have... Their industries are not like ours. Yeah. Government owned. Oh, it's government owned. So, um, or government control. But anyway, yeah. the whole idea was, it's like... It's, they say, uh, to, how do we control the um, pharmaceutical industry? Yeah. We make their products cheaper. Oh, I get it. Now, it's not the normal market, but they do. Because now... Yeah, it's not free market. Yeah. No, no. So what they, the, the government says, we'll make all these, and we'll keep the price this point. Yeah. Low. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they don't have to make a profit in China. Got I'll it. tell you a true story about real estate, which doesn't make sense either in the look. So mm. we control the price for four years. Yeah. They control the price low. Low, yeah. Okay. No competitive company in the world can compete. No. All no. the companies automatically go there because they. Then what do they do? Why wouldn't they? Yeah. <laughs> now when they've got control, yeah. they raise the price. Oh my gotcha. goodness. Gotcha. Now you've got no companies in. in what a trap! What a suck. It's a trap. It's a trap. Let me give you an illustration that I saw uh, and experienced in China. Real estate. Yeah, real estate. Mm-hmm. They have built cities with no people. Entire cities with no people. That's right. <laughs> okay. Right. Apartment blocks, no people. Okay. Because they control the money. If mm. their money was correctly uh, on a free market yeah, basis, yeah. like everybody else's currency, yeah, they couldn't do it. Yeah. <laughs> so they control their currency, okay. so that they can do these things. Mm. At our expense, basically. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you know, another thing that he showed me. That's interesting. Back some years ago, I was hauling scrap iron. Yeah. All of a sudden, the company says, get as much as you can because China. we have a big contract with China. Yeah. Now, they've, Even, that's wow. right. They've done it with they, everything they've done. It. With, with, with uh, China now, yeah. the situation is the Canadian steel companies are hanging on by the, 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 the skin of their teeth. Really, eh? Because mm. they control the price. That's right. Oh, yeah. China controls the price. Got it. Right. And you know yeah, that they have yeah. thousands upon thousands of big buildings with condos. They're empty. I know. Why? But Vern, I've seen it. You know why? Mm. People are making $2 a day. They could How do you them. have a condo making nothing? You, you, and they're empty. Yeah. See, they made mistakes. Like we all do. No, no, this isn't a mistake. 
No, but the government now the, got the, the stuff the, in. The, 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 the intention is total control of every right. business. And it's everything. all about control. It's all about control. So they control, they, they will pick on an area, right. and again, because they're not subject to a competitive marketplace, right. initially, yeah, yeah, that they can adjust their currency. And cheap labor, too. Right. And, yeah, Tons but they can labor. adjust in such a way yeah. that um, they can mark, again, corner the market, as they have done on steel, right. Right. and as they're doing it on cars, oh, same oh, yeah. thing. Yeah. So the yeah. idea is that they, they own that market, then normal Western uh, producers can't yeah. compete. Right. And you, you, they wait long enough to put them out of business. That's right. Then so, they come along with their yeah. cheap product, but then they so that's why product. Trump is finally uh, saying we that's need the manufacturing back in that's exactly on, our, right. on our land. That's exactly right. Yeah. Interestingly enough, yeah. um, one of the big problems with the virus was car companies can't f fill their car because they had too many parts from China. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Oh, China goodness. dominates all the parts. Yeah. Because they've all already in place these massive factories, right? They yeah, can because they can. All. Because they're because running they a... a they're running China like it's a business for itself. And One it's, not, it's, not, it's not competitive on the world market. Yeah, yeah. Now, when I was there, wow. the currency, the, the yuan, oh, yeah. they, it's deliberately depressed. Deliberately, okay. So, so they have a, the reality, a agenda with if that, if too. that <laughs> if, if their currency was on world market, yeah. it would probably double or triple. Okay. If it was on the competitive world market, if, but they yeah. won't do that. They won't do that. So they undercut mm. everybody yeah. by controlling the currency, okay. yeah. which means the business, they put competitors out of business because they can. Because they can. Because yeah. they control internally the whole system. And now because mm -hmm. of the size of the well, you remember the, they're, you they're running the show. We used to get stuff from Japan right. before. Yes. And all of us in Japan, the price went up, everything in there. Yeah. But mm. China took over, yeah. making everything so much well, the cheaper. The reason Japan had to raise the prices mm. because the value of their currency right. on the world marketplace had to yeah. rise. Yeah. China will not do that. They control right. how they sell. That's right. You yeah. see? And, and now, they're big enough to be able to do that. And now they, they control the whole world by control. fear. Yeah. That must be yeah. what God you know, said in the, in the end of the Bible. It's going to be China and Russia yeah. that yeah. basically act as right. giant right. Uh, armies and come in, down on Israel. everything. Um, yeah. And having been to China, about 20 times on business. 20 times now. Okay. So I've seen how the system works. Whoa. Now it's Total controlled control. by fear. Everybody's yeah, controlled by fear. A lot of the American manufacturers yep. made that money. They went off seas. It was, a, it was a greed thing way back in the That's years. right. Well, if I can get it manufactured for much cheaper in oh, China that, and then ship right. back to me. Then, then what I do, yeah. that, what's the natural business is the natural one that they can buy it cheaper somewhere else. And, and then, and, and if your competition is doing it, then yeah. you have to do it. You have to do it. Because you can't. Right. Once they get that, and that's how they actually the control That's why Trump yeah. is so smart. Yeah. He's a businessman. That's why the government never should have opened up trade. He's not a politician. He's a businessman. That's why people think oh, he's a you know, he's, he's clumsy. With his language, he's a businessman. That's why people think, oh, you know, he's clumsy with his language and things like that. Only slightly. But up here, this man knows what he's doing. Oh, I agree. Mostly, we're all controlled by greed. Mostly, <laughs> unless you yeah. try to rein that in with God's That's help, right. eh? That's right. But yeah, we don't want to we, share our pie. Yeah. Well, it was a mistake in the beginning, in the '60s or '70s, for the states in Canada, and mostly the states, I guess, to ever decide that we should just ship everything over there, and 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 you know. But you've got the point. They didn't look at once, the long-term consequences. You see. Once your competitor yeah. is buying cheaper there and yeah. making more money. Well, but I mean, the government shouldn't have ever permitted it in the first place. I mean, ideally, it's easy to be an yeah, armchair no, quarterback. No, it, right? Now, the difficulty you know is, I mean? you've got a world which everybody is competing. Well, <laughs> but I know what you're saying. But, but they are. Isn't there something to be said for closed borders in as much as that way you guarantee your citizenry decent jobs? Well, that's jobs exactly and, what the Chinese are. Now, the yeah. other thing the Chinese do, they yeah. do not respect intellectual property. Oh, they don't, they? No. Not at all. Ooh. They will steal from you. Okay. So the, the huge, I've seen the buildings in Beijing, yeah. huge buildings where uh, oh. people on computers are hacking everywhere in the world to steal oh, ideas. Oh, massive numbers of hackers. Oh, I see. They I see. are experts at it. Yeah. 
Uh, experts. And, on, and, if you, they and, hack. and you've got to admit, if you're a good hacker nowadays, uh, you can get every all the information. But of course, it's government control hacking. Of course. So, so yeah. we're here. Your intellectual property. Yeah. If you have a um, mm -hmm. what's it called now? A uh, patent. On something? A patent. patent yeah. If you've got a patent, yeah. nobody. People have to pay you for the patent. In China, yeah. now they don't get right. an Australia patent, and they make the stuff because they're China. They can do it and export it. Too bad. That's right. Yeah. That's right. They've got you your idea. That's right. So go they're not the in the least into. They throw have. You in jail. They have. <laughs> yeah. True. True case. Yeah. In my own point. Oh, yeah. We had a, an opportunity yeah. to do a design concept for actually a small uh, center of a city, and oh. it was. The roads are the, basically based on retail. So it was a nice little mall somewhere, yeah? Yeah. It, it was a bit more than a little mall, more but little it mall. was the center of a city, small oh. city. Oh, wow. So okay. um, <laughs> we, um, we, yeah. we were, I think there were four or five companies who were pitching for this. Okay. And so the Chinese government said, look, if you don't get the job, we will pay you X amount. Okay. Okay. Okay, that, that's fair. Yeah. I mean, the, the money paid wouldn't at all pay for yeah. the amount of time you invest in it. But, mm. it. but the fact is, so we entered this thing. Yeah. Of course, we didn't win it. Okay. Yeah, and that was course. the plan anyway. <laughs> yeah. And so we said, well, can we get paid? At least. And you yeah. know what they said? No. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, well, why? He said, because you're Canadian. You've got lots of money. You don't need it. This is the government. Saying that. Too. That's the <laughs> mentality. Now, oh. fortunately, yeah. our contacts, and it's all about who you know in China. Okay. It is in business generally. But in China, it's the ultimate. The ultimate, okay. Who you know. Who you know. And okay. so what happened was, um, mm. because our contact had enough pressure to put on, we got, actually got paid. Okay. But that was their, now, the point is, that's their attitude. Wow. Give you a case in point. Um, we were negotiating with a man to build a, literally, a small, uh, like a resort, golf course, uh, shopping. Oh, wow. Um, nice resort. It, yeah. it was, a, I think, a good, really good, you know, sort of a Florida thing. Yeah. yeah. The man that owned it, yeah. he was a general, retired. Oh, he used to be in the army. Yeah. The, the Chinese, the point is, the Chi nobody owns anything in China. Oh, okay. That's except right. the government. Right. Except, uh, except the government. If you buy a condo in, yeah. in Shanghai yeah, yeah. and you'll pay the same as you'll pay here, okay. after 50 years it goes back to the government. 50 years. Only 50 years? That's all. You're just renting. That's right. You're renting. Oh, my goodness. You can't build equity that way. Well, you can't pass anything on to your because <laughs> that's right because it goes back to the government. Oh, right. But the people in the government, well, they have a different rule for that. Oh, they do, eh? So ah. the general, yeah. and more the story. The general yeah. Yeah. owns this space. It's actually an, an old uh, iron ore mine. Oh, okay. And we went to see it. I've, I've been there on, on the site. Yeah. And what he plans to do, and so we did some concept work of how he fit in with his shopping center and his resort area. Mm. And um, mm. the idea was that we would get paid when the thing comes to pass. So he gets our ideas for free. Yeah. Right. 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 Now we say we need a meeting with him and his his architects and the architects uh, mm. that he he used. They come to Toronto. Yeah. And we have a meeting. They did come, well, they flew into Toronto, yeah. Flew in Toronto. Okay. And so did the, the general. Oh wow. And and everyone's there must have been about thirty people in this meeting. Consultants. Wow. Uh, the general oh. the general you find after about half an hour because he doesn't speak English. All oh, right. And the, right. the you know, the meeting's in English and there's some bit of translation. he's not interested. So he gets up, he disappears. Oh. <laughs> uh, this is a Friday meeting, he disappears. So yeah. on the Monday, we, re we reassemble. He just leaves, eh? just leaves. But, but then he comes back on the Monday. Oh, he does, okay. It's part of the meeting for a short time. <laughs> but we find out mm. he takes off to Niagara Falls Casino. Oh. <laughs> and he loses $30,000. Really? 
Of your dollars? No, no. His. His own dollars, somehow. Now. Oh, you mean he spent, he, he gambled it? Gambled away. Oh. Now, here's the rule. Yeah. You can't come into Canada with any more than $10,000 cash. That's right. Or, <laughs> show, or you've got to report <laughs> anything over that, yeah. He comes in with 30000 Then he loses. Unreported. Yeah. Unreported. Of course. Oh. <laughs> there are, there's a company. Cash, in, eh? Just I've done design work. Yeah. For a company in San Jose, Chinese owned. Oh, but in San Jose, but Chinese yeah. owned. Chinese, yeah. originally from Chinese men. American allowed? America allowed? It's an that? American. Amer uh, it's an American. No, it's not. It's a Chinese owned company. It's a, it was a jeweler. Yeah. And this jewelry store, yeah. it had all the top end watches. Some of them burned thirty, forty thousand dollars per watch. For a watch. <laughs> the most expensive watches in the world. One's even higher end than Rolex, maybe. There's special yeah. names. And yeah. Rolex there there are elite brands of watches. Oh, wow. I know, I know about this. Okay. So what happens is yeah. they're, 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 they're based, they're people that shop there, yeah. they're not American citizens, they're Chinese. <laughs> yeah, they got their own club. Like they, they, they literally, plain loads of Chinese come in and oh, they the, come in from China. Shop they come, in San Jose. They shop in. You know why? Why? Yeah. Because they can buy the thirty thousand dollar watch. Yeah. For ten thousand dollars here, it well, would cost them a hundred and thirty thousand <laughs> in China. What the Chinese do? If you, oh. for instance, if you buy a car worth a yeah. hundred thousand, sure. Yeah. If you want to buy it in China, it's two hundred thousand. Oh, that's what happens. Okay. So, so it's worth again, a this, is, this is because they can yeah. control the whole market. Oh, so what okay. happens is now, yeah. even the um, the theft of cars in Toronto, high end cars, they just disappear. Yeah. Well, do. you remember? You know where they yeah. disappear? To? They go in the back of a truck. They get shipped over to China. Yeah. Sh shipped over Saudi Arabia, anywhere. Is that how? Is that why? Could that have any reason why? Remember, uh, Gail and I got a surprise phone call from the bank last year. Two hundred and fifty thousand. Because someone did fraud inside the TD Bank, yeah. and they believed it was an Asian fellow. Yeah. And and we he tried to wire two hundred fifty thousand of our dollars from our line of credit yeah. over to a That's bank what in he China. Does. It was in China. Somewhere. Exactly the same thing. Yeah. So they try to steal yeah. stuff that we have, money, cars, whatever. Yeah. Look what I had to do. Wow. In, in business Thank was, it was tough, but when when I got money from the client, it would be cash. Oh, it had to be cash. Yeah. It would be American dollars. Oh, American cash. Oh, wow. And I, of course, coming back into Canada, yeah. I've got $10,000 US, which is a lot more than 10000 <laughs> So, in a sense, I had to... Technically, you I, should report it to the border. I should have reported yeah, it. Yeah. But that's how they do it. Yeah. Wow. So, the, there are now these stores... Like I, say, I designed you must have two. Briefcases. <laughs> I designed two of these big stores. In, over in China? No, no, in, in California. Oh, down in California? In California. Because these Chinese stores are catering Chinese from the mainland yeah, yeah. who say, look, I want to buy... The thing in China, mm -hmm. for status, you've got to have a Rolex. Oh, the famous Rolex thing. Okay. You've got to have... There are brand names that they love. Or a Tag Heuer or something. Yeah, <laughs> but again, the Tag is still... That's yeah. not on high-end watch. Oh, it's not as high as a Rolex? Not by Chinese oh, standards. Not by Chinese. So, right. the big thing is, in China, the 30... Thousand dollar watch costs sixty thousand, <laughs> and all they're making yeah. their money. So how do they show off? Uh, yeah, they fly yeah. to California. Yeah, they go in groups, and they will mm -hmm. literally uh, spend thousands and thousands of dollars mm -hmm. in cash. Okay. okay, American currency. Oh boy! You know what they said the last few years? Awesome. They saw more Rolls Royce. To China than anywhere in the world. That's this right. this is a communist country. That's right. So That's what England said. Hmm? These stores that you designed for these Chinese people. In They're California. in California. I, I, now, I can't send so you would pictures you say of the, the bulk stores. of their customers then are people bulk. that fly in from That's right. China. Bulk of the customers. They don't care that much if they get some U.S. Yeah. guy. And to customers. give you an idea, um, yeah. in the problems. one mall in San Jose, yeah. uh, Tiffany's and neighbors. You know, oh, yeah. you <laughs> think of the ultimate high-end stores. They're all in this mall. Oh, they're all in the same mall, eh? That's right. They're, they're big mall in San Jose. Okay. And what happens is the Chinese come in. Yeah. <laughs> and they buy stuff, and they take it back to China and sell it. Why do the Chinese buy <laughs> so much real estate in, in British Columbia and places like that? Is that because part of the they same can. deal? Because they have the cash? Because they have the cash. 
Because but I thought they weren't look, paid that well. No, 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 no. Or is it some are and it's some aren't? Some are. Oh. They have there's the elite and then there's the Oh my goodness. Yeah. To give you an idea, yeah. on the on the um, huh. the east coast of China. Yeah. Population <laughs> they say this this was twenty years ago. Alright. Um three hundred million Chinese yeah. had more money. If you took the United States and took three hundred million US citizens and you yeah. put three hundred million Chinese, yeah. the Chinese yeah. were a lot more more wealth. Really? Purely because of the owning currency, owning because owning. of the way they do stealing the business, stealing oh, the intellectual right. property. Oh right, right, right. I mean, That's why they it's, cri it's, it's criminal. It, yeah. it makes the yeah, people look like saints. Wow. The whole Chinese yeah. the system is, I would not trust Chinese for anything. They would lie. They have, what a they're, they're only, yeah. look, the, the only thing that, chi that will hurt wow. the Chinese is money. That's Gold, right. It's all about money. Yeah. You, th you think people are greedy here. You've seen that. Is that why some of the Chinese try to emigrate here and the states to they can't sleep. they can't stand the country, they want to get out of it and emigrate. Some do well, I think not it's, all. But. Yes, but here's what they I, I talked about yeah. you can't think of your future. In China Yeah, no future, yeah. Okay. You can, you can buy a condominium. Right. Okay, so it's whatever it is. You know, so it's two million dollars. Right. Okay. Yeah. Fifty years later you lost it. You've lost it. You cannot build equity in China. Because it all belongs it's supposed to belong to the people, but all it does belongs to the elite Chinese party. The elite. Party. The elite. Everything is controlled by the party. Massively corrupt. Wow. Totally corrupt. Mm -hmm. Totally. So those are why. That's why many would try to get out of there if they possibly Absolutely. can. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. So at least they can build equity in Canada. So if they come here, yeah. now the other thing they do is this. Open a uh, we were we were right? look before we moved from our home in Curtis here. We yeah. were looking for a smaller home. Yeah. We went to Newcastle. Oh, and and the whole yeah, development yeah. down by the lake, yeah. and um, there was a whole street okay. owned by Chinese. Nobody lived there, they were all in China. Oh, unoccupied, but owned. That's right. What they were doing, yeah. the idea was, mm. you, you buy in Canada, the United States, yeah. you have it forever. Oh, yeah. I can't yeah. buy anything in China forever. forever. No, no. They own everything. So, so yeah. Over in Markham, eh? It's basically Chinatown there. That's it's become, right. it's that's become right. Beijing over there. Yeah, that's like, right. Like that's they right. totally the dominant every the business, same. every now every the interesting thing. enough, the same pattern happened in Britain with oh. the, with Saudi Arabian oil. Oh yeah. The Saudis yeah. came to Britain, mm. London in particular, mm. bought all the best properties. Oh boy. Lots of money. The government just doesn't let matter. Them, let them do it, yeah. And of course, like you said. It's a, the point is, with the West, we have an open market. Right. China is not an open market. Right. You've got a country like Sa Saudis run the same way. You can't compete in those countries. Right. It's on their terms. You've probably been there. That's right. It's on no, their terms. Saudi. I've been to United Arab Emirates. Oh, right. Yeah, I've okay. been to Dubai and Abu Dhabi and... Um, and all those kind of places. Yeah, I've been there. Wow. Anyway, that's the story.